In this episode, one of the most brutal crocodile attacks happens to a beautiful model. This is the real story of Ginger Fay Meadows, the American model who was taken by a crocodile during what was meant to be the trip of a lifetime. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. Welcome to Final Affliction. Following the success of the movie Crocodile Dundee, Australia saw a huge spike in American tourists eager to experience the outback and what Australia had to offer. More than 250,000 Americans visited the country, a 27% increase on the year before. 24-year-old Ginger Meadows traveled to Australia from Aspen, Colorado. She had spent some time attending the America's Cup races that were held in Australia in February and now traveled around the country, exploring its natural beauty. She was sailing aboard a 105-foot luxury yacht, Lady G. She had agreed to work on board as the chef's assistant beside Australian chef Jane Burkett to earn her passage from Perth to Darwin. She was then keen to visit Papua New Guinea before heading home, but she would never make it. Only a day before her 25th birthday, tragedy struck. The skeleton crew aboard the yacht pulled up just south of Darwin on March 29, 1987. They took a speedboat up the Prince Regent River estuary towards the beautiful Cascade Falls. They were heading into crocodile-infested waters, and they knew it. Skipper and Captain of Lady G, Bruce Fitzpatrick, who accompanied them to the falls, warned the team not to so much as dangle a toe overboard. He knew the dangers, and he knew that there were said to be more than 100 saltwater crocodiles in that stretch of river. Whilst Bruce Fitzpatrick and some of the other crew members got off the boat and began climbing the waterfalls, Ginger and Jane jumped into the water. The two women were in waist-high water, splashing about on a ledge at the foot of the falls, against the advice of others. The water was brown and murky. Vegetation surrounded the river and clung to the steep walls of the waterfall. As the two women enjoyed the coolness of the river below, Bruce glanced down at them. He spotted something in the water that made the blood freeze in his veins. It was the characteristic outline of a crocodile. Its knobbly back, tail, and head protruded through the surface of the water. It moved slowly towards Ginger and Jane, its tail propelling it through the water silently. Bruce yelled down to the two women. He screamed at them to get out of the water. They looked around. Less than 15 feet from them was the huge crocodile. Its mouth was open, gaping wide. They could see its sharp teeth as it came closer. Ginger grabbed hold of Jane's arm. The two women were trapped. They backed up as far as they could until they were up against the waterfalls. The water covered their legs. The riverbank was 25 yards away. Above them, the slippery vertical rock of the waterfall. In front of them, an apex predator on the hunt. Jane screamed at the crocodile. It didn't move. She took off one of her shoes and threw it at the enormous reptile. The shoe smacked the crocodile on the head. It closed its mouth. Ginger asked what they should do now. Jane was about to say, stay here. But before Jane could answer, Ginger let go of her arm and leapt into the water. She made a mad dash for the riverbank. It was only 25 yards away. It was so close, just off to the right-hand side. Surely she could make it if she swam for it. Jane was left shocked. She couldn't believe Ginger had made that move. She held her head in her hands, thinking, why, oh why did she do that? Ginger only made it a few feet in the water before the crocodile lunged forwards. She had only taken two strokes in the water when the crocodile surged towards her and grabbed hold of her upper legs and waist. Its jaws clamped down around the young woman and dragged her beneath the water's surface into the murky river. Moments later, she resurfaced in the crocodile's jaws. Her arms were outstretched, reaching out to Jane. She didn't say anything. She didn't utter a word, but she knew her fate was sealed. Her eyes locked with Jane's for one final time before the four-meter crocodile took her underwater once more, never to be seen alive again. It was a heartbreaking and truly shocking incident. 
The sheer terror the two women must have felt when they saw the crocodile swim towards them in the waist-high water. The feeling of being cornered, of being trapped, with nowhere to go, and then making a dash for it, hoping upon hope to make it to the riverbank, only to be snatched right in front of your friend. There was nothing anybody could do. The shock and horror they endured as they witnessed the attack will likely never leave them, and the loss of Ginger has left a massive hole in her family's lives. Her father, George Meadows, was appalled that the crew from the Lady G luxury yacht allowed Ginger to swim in crocodile-infested waters. But according to Bruce, the skipper, Ginger was warned not to swim, and she ignored those warnings, a decision that cost her her life. And even today, despite warning signs and the knowledge of past crocodile attacks, people still go swimming in the same rivers and waterways. Attacks have become so frequent that the local government are introducing fines for anyone caught swimming in prohibited waters. Two days later, human remains, thought to be those of Ginger, were found on the riverbank, near a cluster of mangroves. It would have been Ginger's 25th birthday, a chilling reminder of just how fragile life is. It took a while to reach the body due to high tides, but eventually officials collected it. She was placed in a body bag, but that wasn't the end of the ordeal for those involved in the search. Police placed the body bag at the front of their 23-foot rescue boat and began motoring back downstream towards the mouth of the river. After nine miles or so, they were suddenly confronted by a huge crocodile that leapt four feet out of the water, snapping at the body bag. It ripped a hole in the bag before disappearing underwater. The crew of the rescue boat decided to turn back around. They didn't want another attack on their hands, and the sheer size of that crocodile, along with its ability to leap clear out of the water, made the journey perilous. They knew they were in the territory of known man-eaters. This mission was not for the faint of heart. They motored back upstream and anchored at St. George Basin. There, they waited for a much larger customs vessel to transport Ginger's remains to Broome, some 500 miles southwest of the river. The following day, Ginger's husband, Dwayne McCauley, flew to Broome to identify her. News of Ginger's traumatic death shocked the world. It was one of Australia's most high-profile attacks. But there have been many other attacks in Australia and within the Northern Territory where Ginger was killed. Despite warnings and signs telling people to stay clear of the water, people still enter the water and are attacked and killed each year. A more recent attack involved a Vietnamese farmer, Tran Van Lan. He was fishing on the Adelaide River with his wife in August 2014. The couple had lived in Australia for just over a year when the tragedy occurred. They often fished for catfish in the river, using hand lines which Tran Van Lan threw into the water. His wife, Li Tai Bei, had warned him of crocodiles, but he had responded that there were none in that part of the river that they hunt elsewhere. On the tragic evening in August, at about 5.30 p.m., his line snagged on something underwater. He walked through the mud to try and release the line and waded a short distance into the water. Thinking her husband wouldn't be long, Ms. Lee collected their belongings and turned to head for the car. And that's when she heard it, a large splash and commotion in the water. She looked around to see a large crocodile's tail thrashing about in the water. It had her husband's arm in its jaws. She pulled out a knife and ran to the water, but the crocodile pulled Mr. Tran underwater. She frantically pulled on the fishing line, thinking that her husband might be holding on to the other end of it. She screamed for help, but no one came. Then she ran to the car and sped to the nearby crocodile tourist boat operator. A search was immediately launched for Mr. Tran, but it was too late. Michael Jackson, the well-known piebald or semi-albino crocodile known to frequent the territory, was caught with a human hand and arm in his mouth. Officials shot the 15-foot crocodile and found Mr. Tran's leg inside. Later, they discovered the fisherman's body further downriver. Recently, people, as well as Ms. Lee, have called for a cull of crocodiles in Australia. Culling was banned in the 1970s, and since then there has been an explosion in crocodile numbers. Over the past few decades, 
their numbers have bounced back from the brink of extinction and many estuaries are now at full croc capacity. Since 1971, there have been over 100 reported crocodile attacks in northern Australia, with 20 of those being fatal. Although these attacks make headline news, globally, dogs kill 25 times more people and mosquitoes 750 times more. So, is culling the answer? Or is education a better strategy? 500 crocodiles are already culled in the Northern Territory every year, and a thorough education program called CrocWise saturates the local schools, communities, and media with crocodile safety information. It seems tourists and members of the public who ignore the warnings about crocodiles are the ones who need to be taught just how dangerous these animals can be. Those are usually the ones who meet their horrifying final affliction.